Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial about animating lights. I recently created a reaction video for Kada's villain concert video starring Evelyn. And one of the scenes that I really fell in love with was her walking and you see this animated lights in fog. And I thought that it would be fun. Let me rewind that just to show it again. And I thought it would be fun to recreate something similar with my character Calico. So I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to create this type of lighting in Maya. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a scene here where Calico is walking. It's only 65 frames for now, but I think that should give me enough of a idea of how to animate some lights. Now, according to the music video, um, they're using spotlights. So I'm going to go ahead and go to create lights spotlight. And here we are. So here's the spotlight, and if I try to render, you'll notice that nothing happened. That's because the spotlight's not intense enough. So let's grab that spot, spotlight, do a control A, let's take a look at the attributes. So to be able to see the spotlight, I'm going to increase my intensity to 10, and I just want to make sure it's pointing to at least the ground. So let's take a look at that. As you can see, we are starting to see that spotlight. It's very large. So to control the size of this cone, we have to use what's called the cone angle. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the cone angle. So it's going to be a lot smaller. So you can, you can barely, I'm going to increase the gamma here just so you guys can see it. So you guys can see that this is the circle that it's creating based on the current settings, but now, or the previous settings, but now that I've decreased the cone angle, we can get a little bit of a sharper circle. Now that we have this sharper circle, um, it's a little too smooth from one end to the other. So we need to play is with the penumbra angle and a drop off. So the penumbra angle, if you start increasing it, you're going to notice that the edges start to fade away, which is actually a lot more realistic in the sharp angles. You see uh, the sharp edge. So make sure that you increase that penumbra angle. So I might do like a five. So you can see now that the edges are now nice and soft. The color from the center out of, to the edge of the light is very even. So that's where the drop off comes in. So again, if I start increasing the drop off, you're going to notice that it starts creating this gradient from the center out. And I actually really want that. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 10, maybe a little bit more just so we can see the effect. So that's too strong. Well, let me go ahead and change that back to 10 and you can see the effect. Three might be a better number in this scenario. So now I have a 10 and a three with a smaller cone angle. Now, according to the video, the light is a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna, gonna change the color to a slight more, more bluish color. And remember to keep it light because the darker the color, the less light it emits. So we have something like that. Probably will make it just a little bit lighter so it still looks white. Okay, it's a little hard to see. Let me change this back to zero because that's the the actual light. And I'm going to increase the intensity. Now the intensity is right now at 10. But if you go down into Arnold, you also have an exposure. So exposure will take the intensity and then exponentially increase it. So let me change that to exposure of two. So it's basically taking that value and increasing it. So let's go ahead and increase this to 10 just to see the number. Now we have something that's a little too bright. So let's go ahead and now that we know what's too bright, let's pick something in the middle. I'm gonna do seven. That's starting to look pretty good. Now we still can't see very much. So let's add some fog. And to add fog, you need to go to your render settings. If you're in the common tab, go ahead and go to Arnold and then open up the environment. So over here under atmosphere, there's a little connection. Click on that and you're going to choose AI atmosphere fog. This creates a node called atmosphere and you can see that we have some density. So I'm going to increase my density all the way to one, just so you guys can see the effect. So by having the density at one, you can see how intense that light is. Now I can also change the color. So if I want it to be that a little bit of a blue, I can go ahead and change it as well. Now I'm going to keep playing around with the color, but I think I'm starting to get, you know, the feel of the mood. Now the lighting is still really intense and it's only one spotlight, but at least I'm getting the, the concept. I'm just starting this whole thing. Okay. Next is the fog. The fog is way too even. So what we want to do is to be able to break up the fog. 
So what I'm going to do is go to my density of my AI atmosphere and click on this little output. And I use one of my favorite nodes, which is under Arnold, and it's called AI Noise, which is right here. Now it's going to give you this connection editor because AI Atmosphere can only accept black and white images and the AI noise can do color, which is RGB. So I'm going to open up this little plus sign next to out color and I'm going to grab the out color R and then I'm going to choose density. So it's going to make a connection between, well, you think it's the red channel, but it's actually a black and white image of the red channel. And then you have the density, which can only accept black and white. So now I have those two connected. And let's see what happens. So you can see the effect the noise has. It's pretty chunky, but it breaks up the size of the fog, which is really important. So I'm going to decrease the scale of my AI noise. I'm going to change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And now you're starting to get a little bit of that breakup of the fog. So it doesn't look so even, which is nice. Let's go ahead and start filling the, this environment. Um, I am going to go ahead and change the intense exposure a little bit because it's, uh, it's a little bright, so I'm going to go ahead and change the exposure to 5. I feel like the color could be a little bit darker, and I think I'm actually relatively happy with this. All right, so what I'm going to do is duplicate it, so make sure you select your spotlight, Control D. And what's nice about this duplication is that it keeps the fog. Uh, it doesn't keep the fog, sorry. It, uh, it keeps all the attributes that you just had. So now I'm going to move it over here, duplicate this one. Face it over there, duplicate that one, kind of fill the environment with some fog. Maybe one a little bit further back. So I'm just kind of duplicating a bunch of lights. All right, so I have a render cam. Let's go to camera one, so panels perspective, camera one. And if you guys are wondering how I did that, you just go to create camera, camera. So I'm going to go to Panels Perspective, Camera 1. My scene looks like so far, I can probably use a lot more lights. Now we have this scene. Grab the camera, just want to make sure there's no keyframe. So you can see I added a keyframe. So there's a little bit of an animation here, but I feel like it's a little far away. So what I'm going to do is select my camera, go to my channel box, and you'll see these red lines. You can get rid of them. You can get rid of all keyframes by just right clicking on the text and then going to Break Connection. This will remove all keyframes. And this is going to help because now I can move my camera a little bit closer to my character just like in this uh, music video. So maybe I'm going to focus in on her, kind of set her up, make sure I'm looking slightly upward at her, move this around a little bit, make sure she's somewhat centered. If you guys want to, you can even use this, which will add a grid to it and you can tell where the middle point is. So it's up to you where you want to put it, but I'm using this to kind of help me figure out where the placement is. All right, so make sure you select the camera, click on the camera. It's a little crazy, but that will st you can still see the grid fairly well. So I'm going to kind of follow her a little bit. So she's kind of, she's centered. Hit S. Again, make sure you have the camera selected. Go to 65. Whoop, she moved a lot. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Try to get the same, relatively same angle. Yes. And then we can watch it. So you'll notice that she's walking fairly even and she almost catches up to the camera and then, and that's because the animation um, automatically has a curve to it. So make sure you have your camera selected. Let's go to Windows, Animation, Graph Editor. And you'll see that the movement that I've made or the animation that I have made automatically has this curve which is an in, easy in is out, and which I really don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of this and just click on this straight line. This will straighten the curve so it's just an even motion. Instead of accelerating and decelerating, it'll, it'll be more even. So let's see if that made a difference. There you go. Cool. All right, let's compare this render. So make sure you go to camera, right? So down here, there's a perspective, which is what we're looking at right now. Let's go ahead and go to camera, shape, and press play. So this is the funny part. You can see that we're getting fog, but we don't see her at all. Now she's there. If I click on the alpha channel here, you can see that she's there. It's just that there's no light. So to be able to see her a little bit, I'm going to create a sky dome. Now the sky dome is all in white. 
So, oops, let me get out of luminosity alpha. Now we're in RGB. So it's gonna illuminate the scene evenly. And you can see like she's almost wearing kind of like sleeves and stockings and stuff, which is kind of funny, but it's too intense. So again, it's just there to kind of help fill in the environment. So I'm gonna really, I'm gonna choose kind of like that blue that we've been going for. And I'm also going to decrease the intensity significantly. So let's see what type of effect it has. Now, the nice thing about this lighting is that it's even, but the problem is, is that it really makes you can see her uh, still a little too much. And I'm gonna go really low to 0 0.02. This is enough for us to at least see, be able to see a little bit of that outline, which I think I'm okay with for now, but I might change it later. later. We'll see. Okay, so here we are in frame zero. Let me go to 65 and see what that looks like. I have to revisit where all the lights are because so far everything is basically be, uh, in front of her. So I wanna make sure that there's some lights uh, a lot of lights behind her. Let's go to perspective. I'm gonna grab these lights and just kinda scoot them back. Some of these lights, so now we have several lights in the background, but I also feel like they're all really far away. So what I can do is activate this one, which is two, two panels, and I can take a look at the panel's perspective camera and see where the lights are located. Okay, I'm gonna just start bringing them a little bit closer to the camera. You can't see, unfortunately you can't see the lights because I've turned off the lights, but I can turn these on and then I'll be able to see them a little bit. And let me get in here and let me grab this light's okay. That one's behind her, which is fine. This one's over here, which is fine. So I only have five lights, I probably need a couple more. So I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna put one really far in the background. And all of them are relatively high, so I'm gonna bring some of these up a little higher. Now this is the last frame, right? So when we go to this frame, you'll see that a lot of the lights are still behind her. So that means I have to, you know, grab them and make sure they're in the back. So let me grab a couple, scoot them back so they're in the scene. And let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna render frame zero. We're kind of getting a nice look. And let's go ahead and render. And actually I'll do a little snapshot just so I can get an idea, 65. So we start losing some of the the lights. And you'll also notice that they're really intense up here at the top. You can tell exactly where that light starts and that would be okay, except it's a little too much for me. So I'm, I'm probably gonna change a couple of things. And I also feel like the noise is a little large. So I'm still gonna go in and tweak some, but I actually like this one. I might move it over here and I'll have to duplicate a couple more, make sure that they're facing different angles. And I do want one at the very end to be facing her. Like I wanted to make sure that it lands on her. So when she walks, it's gonna go to her. So I'm gonna duplicate it. And what I can do is go to panels, look through selected. And you'll see this little circle that is actually the light source. So I can go in and make sure that I land on her like so. So she'll actually walk into the light. So if I take a look at the animation, she's gonna be walking and then she's gonna go and end up here. So let's take a look at that. There you go. So you can see that I'm getting some God rays here. We can see that she's being illuminated. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So let me decrease my cone angle, but I'm also going to increase my, um, let me increase actually my exposure. So again, I wanna make sure that it hits her relatively hard, but you'll notice that the fog is really intense. So I want the light to hit her, but I don't want the fog to be that intense. So what I can do is go down and you see how it says volume? I can reduce the volume. And you'll see that the fog starts to fade away. 
which is great. That's what I love about Arnold is that you'll still have the light. The intensity hasn't changed, but the, you can control the intensity of the fog by manipulating this. So it's very, very powerful. Okay, those that light in the background is not working for me. So let me go to panels. Uh, let's go to camera again. I think this light looks like it's like on top of the other. So let me just make sure this one's a little higher. This one's fine. Maybe just make sure that they're not evenly spaced. Just want to make sure all of them are. All right, so we start off here. There's a lot of fog in front of that light, so I have to see which light source is doing that. So pretty sure it might be this one. Let's find out. I'm going to hide it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to animate that. So there is a lot of animation, but once I hit that light, you'll notice that the fog went away. So I wanna make sure that that light only affects her when she walks into that spotlight. So I can animate it. Um, or if anything, I can always just decrease the intense, just remove the volume altogether and you'll still have the light, but you won't have the fog honor. All right, we've accomplished a lot. We have our light, we have our fog, which is pretty sweet, but it still needs a little bit more improvement. So in the next video, we are going to cover how to get rid of that hot spot at the beginning of the spotlight and also how to render this out in nice high quality images. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did find it useful, entertaining, or learned anything, please hit the like button. And also don't forget to share. There's a lot of 3D artists out there that could use this to really make their stuff pop. So please share with them this video if you think it'll be helpful. And also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free stuff, including 3D models, free tutorials, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And if you have time, sign up for my newsletter. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I will see you next time when we finish animating and rendering this scene. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.